I always had the passion about uh, women in business, uh, women's leadership. And I always wondered why we are so underrepresented in so many sectors. I think the first question that I'm going to ask all of you, um, why women entrepreneurs are important for business, Your Excellency? Uh, well, first, I want to um, thank everyone for the great organization and for being here. Um, there's one verse that I like very much, uh, and it's uh, the beginning of research that the IMF did on women participation. And the word that is used is that women participation is macro critical. And that is extremely important. It's how you move from just uh, thinking about a minority that needs more representation uh, into the economic gains Absolutely. to society from women participation. So I think, I think what has happened over time uh, is the ability for us to quantify in numbers uh, to GDP, to employment, to productivity, to even wage increases to men, because as the society becomes more productive, also pay for men becomes higher. So I believe that um, um, the idea of quantification of this cause is extremely important. It has, it ta it has taken um, governments through policies to push the agenda. It has taken international institutions through partnerships uh, such as the uh, Wi-Fi that we have here, Absolutely. and it takes the private sector as well. So this partnership between the public sector, the private sector, and international institutions is extremely important uh, for us to realize the importance of, uh, or to actually, fee to, to actually get the gains from women participation. Entrepreneurship uh, is, and as we just heard from uh, the two fantastic ladies before, uh, and I salute them, uh, for the work. For example, uh, uh, the, six, the Flat Six Labs in Egypt is an example where um, entrepreneurship is cherished. Um, it is uh, actually pushed forward. Um, and the government itself, through different policies, realizing uh, that entrepreneurship is important, is pushing in that policy framework. Rani, I'm going to go back to... Um, I am a big fan, to start with. Uh, I know that you've been in, in Washington, D.C. for so long, and then you had to come back to Egypt, where you had to take some uh, roles in the government and help. And you've helped a lot, empower women um, on so many uh, levels. I want you to tell me two things. One, um, how do you help women in Egypt? And I want you to tell everyone about your four Cs. <laughs> I'm happy that you, uh, you follow them. Um, I think uh, before I go into that, I just want to follow up on one very important point. Actually, women are the ones who pay back loans more than men. Mm -hmm. But yes. that's a narrative that doesn't exist. Yes. And that's why we need to elevate the narrative. Uh, forums such as this, uh, workshops, um, uh, highlighting success stories over and over and over. Uh, not, not feel that it's in your face sort of thing, but it's actually a responsibility. Because it's only by giving the correct stories, successful stories, there are sometimes failures, but the successes are more. And by pushing that, you actually open the doors for more women to come in, Absolutely. and therefore the gains for society, for economy, etc., cetera, become, uh, become there. So, so for example, uh, um, on the financing gap, women in the Middle East, uh, when it comes to uh, small and medium enterprises and, and entrepreneurship, they need a financing gap of around $16 billion. Wow. In Egypt, that financing gap is maybe $4 billion. Wow. Um, so uh, the, the but financial... But we have cash, right? We, we have, don't have a tight liquidity. But, but the, the issue is the financial inclusion. Mm -hmm. This idea of women having access, uh, women having bank accounts, uh, in, uh, having the, um, uh, the guts, if you will, having the encouragement, uh, to, and that's where policy comes in. So we have a central bank initiative for financial inclusion, including women, including programs for women uh, that show that um, uh, if they do participate, the outcome is big. And therefore, the idea of policy, partnership, and private sector all together, this is really what will push the message. But again, the narrative is, is extremely important, and it is not to be belittled. Coming back to your question about myself, um, I think that the best way to help women is to provide good role models um, and to show that uh, you should not um, shy away from taking responsibility. Uh, I grew up being gender blind completely, so I, 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 uh, you just had to be good in your school, get educated well, do well in interviews, keep on pushing, 
Um, and the four C's that you talk about are really the pillars of my own success, and I always talk about them. It's number one, competence. You have to be competent at Absolutely. whatever you, uh, you do. Uh, and that goes, or you get this competency through education and through having a niche that everyone recognizes. The second is connections. Yes. And connections are not to be belittled, but nobody wants to connect with you unless you're competent. Absolutely. So it's not just uh, connections for the sake of it, but you have to really, and one, one connection brings you to someone else just if you are competent. Mm -hmm. the, the third one is confidence. And there's a very uh, silver lining between confidence and arrogance. Absolutely. And that comes from your competence. If you are competent, you bring your subject matter to life uh, in a very uh, entertaining way. People trust you. you. You create that credibility around you. And then the, four, the, fifth, the fourth one, uh, which is charm. Yeah. Um, I have and been, you do have that. <laughs> I have been in rooms where I'm the only woman. I don't see that. I don't want to be the only in the room, but I want to be the best in the room. Yeah. And that is very important. You have to be aware of your surrounding. I've always been with older men. I know better. How do I address that? I have been with subordinates who are twice my age. How do I deal with that? So there's, uh, there's this emotional intelligence that comes uh, over time. So I'm, I'm very happy that uh, I, I'm able to be uh, an example for other women. Through my policy work, when I was Minister of Tourism, uh, we had initiatives to encourage women in the workforce. Today, as uh, Minister of International Cooperation, I look forward to a lot of partnerships with the international community to, again, uh, direct the narrative in a conducive way and to push the agenda forward. I would, I would ask you about the message you would like to take from this discussion, or uh, m maybe you can tell us about some policies you have in mind, anything that will help, you know, like being part of the government, empowering women. So, uh, first of all, um, Egypt in 2017 announced the, the, the Year of Women, and that was something new. The National Council of Women uh, reports to the president. There's political will uh, to do things related to regulation, political empowerment of women. Now we have uh, more than 25% uh, of the cabinet are women, uh, eight ministers. Uh, I was the first minister of tourism in Egypt's history, and that was a bet. It's not my field, but I got the highest revenues in Egypt's history in tourism, so that was uh, good. Uh, there's economic empowerment that is also taking place. So when you take a look at uh, some of the uh, uh, rules related to uh, accessibility uh, to banks, uh, and uh, fintech trying to use that technology and, and empower uh, women, uh, and then there's the social element. Uh, through uh, better uh, targeted messaging, uh, when it comes to the social norms and so forth. I think that for every uh, woman uh, in government, through po I am, I'm a macroeconomist, so I believe in policy frameworks, and, and, and when you do things at the top, they do trickle down. Um, and the private sector today, especially corporates, whether it's the environment or inclusion, this is the way your stock is going to go up. Yeah. So there, it, people do expect responsible business and do expect a lot from CEOs, and their, and their uh, trust in CEOs is sometimes bigger than governments. And that's where the partnership uh, and the stakeholder partnership should come in uh, all the time. But for every woman who is in public office, I feel that our responsibility is double. We have to do our own job for the portfolio that we hold, but we also uh, have to do a good job to open the door for other women in this space. If we say that uh, uh, you need women on, on boards, you need women on uh, panels, the only way to get there is if the women before them have done a good job so that people trust that they can continue doing a good job. Just one thing I will conclude with, our financial regulation authority uh, passed an amendment in December that every company has to have at least one board member that is a woman. So this is also, through regulation, a way to push when it comes to women empowerment. SDGs are around the corner, um, and uh, uh, for uh, the parity, which is the SDG number five, unless you work more on women, we will not be able to get the other 16 as well. So that's the message I would have. 